Hey guys, just thought I'd do another update, update 4, on my entry into the Hawker Harrier 50th anniversary buddy bill, which was hosted by Martin Lamont. Um, now, unfortunately, obviously it's been nearly a month since the group bill, well, the buddy bill was finished, but I am persevering with this and never get it finished. Um, and um, since you saw it on my stew's back of the bench, I have done a lot of the detail paint work. I haven't actually got the decals on yet, because um, I said I wasn't going to actually do an update until I'd done so, but I thought, well, it's been a while um, since I did my last update, and I thought it would be fair enough for me to just sort of give you the progress on how she was coming along. So without further ado, let's have a look at her. And here she is. Um, Basically, as you can see, I've actually finished all the detailed paintwork on the actual aircraft itself. I've got the weapons load on. Um, that's all done. Um, um, I did a lot of research. Mind you, I was a bit of a twit in one regard, um, which I will run down with in a minute. But as you can see, I've actually got the sidewinders on. I did all the detailed paintwork on them and masked them off individually. Um, and obviously I did, did a lot of research off of Google and some archive photos of the Sea Harrier at the time of the Falklands War. So this damn thing is not getting into focus at the moment. Sorry, there we go. Um, so yeah, even, even the demarcation lines on the missile actually masked them off and painted them. And obviously you've got the fairings with the silver parts on the end of the fairings there as well. That was done as well as the nose camera on the sidewinder in silver. And then underneath you've got the one singular bomb. Um, obviously with the arming mechanism painted in as well. On the Aiken cannons I've also painted in the escape hat. Well, the escape chutes there. Unfortunately, I did make a bit of an error in the fact that I didn't realise there were some ejection cartridge uh, holes along the front here, which weren't moulded in the kit. And uh, it's only after I saw some of them, well, let's just say some builds that I'd seen from the past of this, well, the Sea Harrier, that people had actually drilled them in. Uh, I could do that now, but to be honest with you, I really can't be hassled. And to be honest, you're not going to see it once it's sitting down anyway. So... I've left it and it is what it is really um, but I've done the back of the chutes here with the black and at the front and obviously at the side here um, also on the back of the uh, tail uh, member here I painted that in uh, but to be honest with you I needn't have done it because when I was looking at the decal sheet last night they'd already had decals to go in there oops <laughs> But the back of the actual uh, housing here, the uh, inlets are all painted in and masked. And that was quite a fiddly job, I can tell you. And then obviously with the mechanism on the actual cantilever of the tailplanes, I've painted that in as well. Um, ECM pods, I've painted them in. And then obviously the de-icing panels on the tailplane, uh, well, the rudder. Um, that actually I found out as, as, as a decal, but I used to me as curb tape on that, and that is marvellous stuff, I have to say. Um, so I can't fault that. Obviously, you've got the housings in where the outriggers are, that's painted on either side, and obviously, um, the inlet um, grill there, I did that as well, marked that all off, and there that was done. Uh, and obviously and then I dry brushed it over where the grill was with some silver just give it the effect of the, the grill there and show the detail obviously you got the two um, uh, I don't know what they call these um, fairings uh, they're all painted because I did a lot of research on uh, the walk around photos of the actual FRS one that's on a uh, display of a ski ramp at Yeovilton and obviously the airspeed indicator has been painted as well which you can see here um, the end of the nose cone was done obviously the pitot tube has been done more fairings underneath um, what else and obviously the undercarriage bays are all painted in the exact colour although I'm 
I noticed on the one that the Overton the back of this is actually aluminium but I think I'll just leave as it is now um, what else obviously you've got the housings for the uh, outriggers are done as well uh, what else I think that's it on the main actual aircraft so that was done oh also the heat shields have been painted here for the um, exhausts as well I've done them in the iron, dark iron colour of Tamiya's. Um, so that should look good when it's actually dry brushed. And obviously I'm going to weather this up with the exhaust stains um, later on. And then put a dark dirt wash just to bring the detail out once on a, after it's been deckled. Um, and do a bit of chipping on the wing tanks and on the edge of the wings. Because these things, when they're out in the South Atlantic, were getting weathered to hell um you've got chips where it's gone back to the primer yellow primer and the actual aluminium casing as well um so yeah she's going to look a bit beaten up and war weary um because out in the south atlantic you know it would have been harsh on these aircraft uh sub assemblies have been done as well um if I move the camera up a bit, you can see. I might even yeah, we'll zoom in. Um, there we go. Is that gonna let me do it? No, come on. Here we go. Let's move it up. As you can see, all the sub assemblies are done on the air brake, that's all painted. Some of the undercarriage bay doors are all done on the nose wheel. The main undercarriage unit is painted, as you can see here. That's all done. Um, even the nozzles are all painted. I have to give them a second coat. Here's one of them. Uh, this is the back, one of the back nozzles, because there is a difference. The front one is slightly smaller. Um, so, yeah, I went over and airbrushed it again because the coat didn't take very well. And then, obviously, it's been clear coated ready for weathering, etc. So I might use some pastels on those. Um, what else? Um, the outriggers are both done. And, well, I'll show you the nose wheel. That's all done. As you can see here. I haven't actually put the landing lights on it yet. Um, I will do that probably a little bit later down the build. Um, and there's one of the outriggers that was done. The only thing I've missed, which I've discovered in the archive footage, is there's a sort of a um, brass front there on the outrigger. Um, so I'll get that masked off and painted once I've actually put the decals on. Okay, and clear coated again. Um, so that's that really. What else? Oh, yes. Um, also, um, what I've done is the base. Um, I did make a slight hiccup though. I actually got the colour on the base slightly wrong. Where did I put it? Uh, oh, here we go. So this is the base because it's most supposed to make it look as though it's on the deck of HMS Invincible. Um, yeah, centre line. I thought would have been a slight dark grey. Um, I got that wrong. It should be black. So I would have got it done before now, but unfortunately I've run out of thick Tamiya tape. So I've ordered it in. It should be here by the end of the week. And then what I'll do is I'll mask this off and then respray this in black, go over a clear coat, and that's that done. Uh, but what I'm also going to do uh, for the deck markings is I shall use the white numbers off of this decal sheet which is coming with the Sea Harrier and use them for the deck markings um, as well because they're around about the right size um, and I'll be decaling the kit this weekend um, <laughs> and uh, the amount of stencils on it, oh boy in the middle of it all that lot has got to go on the aircraft <laughs> so that's going to keep me busy for at least one day and then the main markings will go on the next day once they're bedded down um, 
but uh, where you've got the air inlets the thing i do like is they've even allowed for that on there so you've got, even got the individual ones that go on the actual air inlet flap doors that's going to be um quite fiddly but it'll be worth it um yeah so that's that really so that will keep me busy this weekend um and then finally obviously we've got two other items i'm going to have a crew ladder which is made by Brendan um, for the Hawker Hunty and the Sea Harrier. So that just needs to be folded and then primed and then painted up, and then obviously it'll be weathered and shipped uh, and then attached to the Sea Harrier as though it's ready to be boarded by uh, the pilot. Now, the pilot of the aircraft that I'm going to be modelling is Sharky Ward. Um, and I've got a photograph of him uh, taken during the time here. And here he is. As you can see, this is the guy whose aircraft I am going to be modelling it as. Um, and he was based, I think, first of all on Hermes, and then he transferred over onto was it um, Invincible uh, with I think 801 Squadron. Um, so yeah. So he was the head commander and flight commander of uh, 801 Squadron at the time of the Falklands one. As you can see, his aircraft is standing right behind him on the deck of Invincible. Um, and this was taken at the time of the Falklands War. Um, so the figure is almost painted. And I did put it down here somewhere. Yep, here we go. Here he is. And as you noticed, I've actually painted his beard on to make it look like Sharky. And I've also started painting what is to be the map in his hand for the flight plan of the mission. Um, and I've just got to put the little detail in of the two islands on there. But it's a lovely figure and it's made by Ares. Um, it's a resin figure. Uh, but I had a slight unfortunate accident because if you notice on the block, I've actually cut his front, the in front of his um, um, feet off. So I'm going to use some Tamiya putty just to build that up and then sand it down, and then that's it, job done once it's painted. Uh, so yeah, that's going to look superb with the figure on the deck. So it really is, um, and I think. To be honest, guys, that's about as far as I've got now with this uh, entry into the buddy build, um, which has now finished, obviously. Let's get back onto the kit itself. I'm going to zoom back out. So, here we go. There she is. Um, so, that's as far as we've got so far in this build. Um, I've been focusing mainly on this role than the Tiger at the moment, and I've got to catch up with that. So if I get a chance this weekend, I'll be working on the Tiger as well. Um, in between deckling this. So there you go. And I've actually got some figures in to go on the vignette with it. Um, so there you go. So basically, guys, that's as far as we've got on the Sea Harrier so far. Um... <coughs> It is a nice kit, it's certainly turning into a very nice build. Um, now she's got her clothes on, and um, the only thing I've got to do now is just basically get the decals on, another clear coat, uh, do a little bit more detail paintwork, get her chipped, and then get her weathered. Um, and then obviously add all the other extra bits at the end. Um, Get her assembled, get the base done and corrected. Probably might weather that up. Um, then add the uh, crew ladder and the figure. And it will be a case of job done. Now I am sort of debating on whether to get uh, flight removed before, removed for before flight tags to uh, go on this kit. But I don't want to drag it out too much longer to be honest with you. I'm looking, I'm hoping to get this finished by the end of the month. Um... And then I can move on to the 100 centenary build uh, with Tim Edworth, which is going to be the Airfix Submarine Swift. Um, and obviously crack on with me entry into the Curse Group build as well. 
And so we've only got just under two months to get that done. Uh, so yeah, either way, I think I'm going to be focusing mainly on the Tiger after this. So there you go. Uh, so as far as we've got as regards this entry. So I hope you like what you see. Um, as I say, it's turning into a nice build. It's had its issues, to say the least. Um, I don't think I'll be in a hurry to buy another kinetic kit again. Um, but once you get past the issues and you get near towards the end, they do make nice kits, I have to say. And the detail on them is absolutely superb. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. So until the next time, get kit crazy, happy modelling, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.